Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to what I think is, now I'm second guessing myself, I think it's episode 48 of The Knife Guy. If I'm wrong, of course, whatever's in the title is correct. If you are brand new to my channel, this series, or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are, I am a knife guy, knife enthusiast, knife user, knife collector, knife enjoyer of many sorts. We are all knife guys and knife gals in this interesting knife world, and we all have our own unique paths, uh, right? But we, uh, we often find ourselves uh, meeting at intersections in terms of experiences, and these shared experiences are what this uh, series is all about. I like to lay out a bunch of knives that are usually other people's knives that have, uh, you know, that they've sent me um, just for me to sort of, um, uh, you know, consider before I review. And I, I just lay them out and uh, pick them up and flip them and give you guys something to watch while you kick back. Still haven't figured out the uh, the flipper actually on the back of this, uh, this Curtis here, but um, just give you guys something to listen to. Um, just lay back and enjoy. Um, so, by the way, thank you to all my generous patrons, everybody who's supporting me during this time. Um, I really appreciate that. You're helping keeping uh, helping keep the channel going. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's a link down in the description where you can get your hands on those stickers and some other exclusive benefits. The support would mean the world to me. So what are we talking about today? Um, so an interesting um, part of, you know, this channel is, it's like I say a lot on uh, these Knife Guy series, you know, it, it allows me to get my hands on a lot of stuff. As you can see here, a lot of stuff that is very interesting and any one of these knives could be considered a grail by any number of people, right? And something that's very difficult to obtain, not just because a lot of it's expensive, but also because some of the things on this table are super rare. Um, and I enjoy them. I enjoy the heck out of them. And it's amazing. And I, people ask me if it dulls my sense of, you know, the, the, the thrill of acquisition because, you know, these things are sent to me in, in masses, right? And, it, and it's not... It doesn't necessarily dull it. I just look at it in a different way. But I definitely do still experience this sort of euphoric rush when I, whenever I handle something that's amazing, right? Uh, that is definitely still a thing. Um, and I'm very much aware of, of, you know, how hard some of this stuff is to get and definitely how expensive it is, which is why they're always spaced apart. We don't have knives touch and bump into each other on this channel because they're not mine. So, yeah, that's still very much a thing. But because they're not mine, it's much easier to be objective. Now, I'm never completely objective during a review, but it's much easier um, because I can, you know, say, because it was sent to me by a person, not the person who made it, not the person who's supplying it, uh, you know, not a retailer, somebody who has purchased it and they love it, right? And they're probably going to keep loving it regardless of my opinion on it, right? They're just sending it because most people just, they're just nice and they want you know, to let me enjoy their knife and, and provide content for everybody. And I appreciate that. But it allows me to, you know, say, here's what I like about it. Here's what I don't like about it. And then send it back because it's not mine. However, the irony of this situation is I still do buy my own knives and I sell my own knives to purchase. I sell knives that I own um, to purchase the knives that I want. The channel funds go right back into the channel because they have to. <laughs> this, this channel would not be able to function if I didn't do that. Um, YouTube is not a lucrative, uh, thing. A absolutely. Unless you're a gigantic channel, which I'm not. So I still experience, um, something quite a bit different when I make my own large purchases. My, where I generally, uh, my, my, where I spend my money, the range is usually between the $200 mark and the $800 mark. I like my ultra high end production knives and my mid techs. I am not somebody, I'm somebody who very much enjoys custom knives, but I, I don't purchase them, uh, mostly because they're just, they're outside of my, my budget or my comfortable budget range, right? If I wanted to, I probably could sell, you know, a, a big chunk of the knives that I own and buy myself a crazy custom, but it's like, would I gain excess enjoyment from that one knife versus the individual bits of enjoyment I, I received from the knives that I sold? Probably not, right? So it's a balanced thing, but you build up expectations. Now we've, we've talked about building expectations. We've talked to you about false reaffirmation, right? Um, but I want, 
I want to dip into that a little bit more because I, I find it funny that I, I recognize what it is. I'm able to be objective with other people's knives, but I experience something completely different when I purchase my own knives, right? And it seems to have to do with a little bit with building up the knife in your mind. We've all done this. We've all decided based on a review, uh, a picture, right? Somebody else's opinion that we trust that we are going to buy. You know that tipping point. You're like, I'm going to have that. That knife is going to be mine. And I'm going to sell, I'm going to piece out that old dirt bike in the garage, right? Or I'm going to sell a bunch of knives or a bunch of stuff. I'm going to, you know, re-roof my neighbor's house this weekend to pay for it. We do that. And we do not stop until we have it, until you've got that confirmation that the knife has been purchased in its in its uh, entirety. Uh, and it is, uh, especially when it says it's been shipped, right? And so the anticipation starts, right? And it's built up and built up. Now we've talked about being let down, right? By the design, like wholeheartedly let down. And you, you are, you know, physically, emotionally, uh, and, and mentally um, aware that the knife has flaws that are beyond, like you, you're basically going to send it back. And if you can't, send, or if you, you know, you, you should send it back. But what a lot of people do at that point is they try to change something and then they screw it up and they realize they can't send it back. So then they sell it. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Just send it back if you don't like it. But, um, but uh, you know, a lot of times what happens is, is you get it and you do love it initially. And uh, so the little bit of that that's, that's built to that point is the, the building up in your mind. And it comes and it has that initial, whatever weight and mass that you were anticipating or the, the feeling of the surface and the, and the visuals, right? If all that syncs up immediately, right when you get it out and then the little things are right, right? It's centered. It doesn't have detent latch. It doesn't have blade play. The action's good. It's a semi drop shot, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got their own checklist, right? I should be picking these up and playing with them while I'm talking here. If everything's right, then you like it, right? Now, um, if over time, uh, you know, you you continue to like it, but there's little things that you realize, you know, were um, maybe things that you didn't consider right off the bat. Maybe the profile is not the best. Maybe the uh, the engagement of the the um, locking mechanism or the flipper tab or the you know whatever it is that you're using to open and close the knife. Maybe it's not exactly perfect. Um, and, but you continue to love it anyway, and you almost ignore a lot of these things that you, you know, either initially didn't recognize, then recognize later, or were pointed out by somebody else. And then you realize, oh yeah, that maybe that is kind of a problem. Case in point here, I actually never considered for the longest time that there was anything wrong with the flipper tab or the landing zone on a hinderer. Oh, surprise, hinders or, or, or Myrtle Complex is talking about hinderers. He's relating it to hinderers again. I know, I can't help it, right? I love hinderer knives. I never even considered there's an issue with a flipper tab. I was aware that people were saying that they weren't the best flippers, right? And then I watched that Jim Skelton video where he talked about preloading the flipper tab and where the jimping was located. And it made sense to me. So when I got the hinderer, I'll admit, the very first hinder, I was like, yeah, the flipping action's kind of weak, especially after handling like the ZT-0562, set myself up for disappointment there. But then I got that preload thing down and I was like, oh, okay, so it's just, it's it's how you approach it, right? It's how you approach that flipper tab. Like I was making a joke there, like how I approach the flipper tab in that de demonstrational video I did however long ago. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, so that, so there's no issue that then, my love for hinders was bolstered with the um, corrected detents in late Gen 4. There are a few Gen 4s out there that do have corrected detents, right? And then they came out with Gen 5 where the detent was completely fixed, but they were still running on nylon. Then Gen 6 with the triways, right? So then they got the bearings. So then I said in some early hinder videos, the some of my earliest videos that were talking about the Gen 6s, those were actually some of the earliest on the channel. Um, I was like, everything's fixed. These knives are perfect now. Right. Um, and then slowly, it wasn't until I, you know, some of the videos that I had done started to get a lot of views. And there were a lot of people commenting. People were like, yeah, they're great, but the flipper tab sucks. The shape sucks. It's pointy, the landing zone. And I was like, what? That's, no, it's not. Right. It's like my mind was fighting so hard. <laughs> my subconscious was like, it does. And my, the main part of my, you know, the front part of my brain was just like, no, it doesn't. It's fine. 
And then I started to play with it and mess with it. And I was like, actually, you know, considering the other flipper tabs that I've experienced, like here's a, here's an example of a great flipper tab. It's this very rare composite ZT0777 with impeccable flipping action and a flipper tab that is shaped correctly. Uh, it's comfortable. It has the jimping in the right place. The curvature is right and the detent brake is good. And the relationship between the weight and mass of the blade and the pivot and all that, it's great. Substantially better than the hinder. And I started, you know, comparing and thinking, oh yeah, it actually, you know, it is a problem. Now, you can, here's the proof of what I'm talking about. Um, there are a lot of knives that have very similar problems to the, the, the same perceived issue on the Hinder XM18 that I come down on much harder. And I think it's because of my bias towards Hinder knives. And the bias is bolstered by my initial expectations. And then a lot of my expectations being met slowly over time with the evolution of Hinder knives. And most importantly, the enormous amount of money that I have paid for not one, not two, but you know, 25 plus hinders. So is there a correlation between, you know, what we expect and those expectations being initially met in combination with how much money we spend? <laughs> I just spent a lot of money on another hinderer that I know good and well has some um, flaws that mean more, that are more or less potent depending on the individual who's using, you know, and or carrying the knife, right? But uh, it's like, why are we ignoring certain things as an individual, right? I mean, why? why? That's the question I'm asking is why do we do that? <laughs> I think it's because when you spend a lot of money on something, you just need to feel like it's justified, right? Um, if, uh, you know, if I got to the point in my life where I could afford a sixty-five dollars to $70,000 half ton, you know, luxury pickup, um, I probably would buy it. You know, I, I mean, like I love muscle cars and I love all that. That's great. But honestly, like, you know, my, one of my, one of my goals is to, to have like a dream pickup. And, um, you know, it, I mean, I, I'm well aware that, that half ton pickups that cost that much money are ridiculously overpriced. They are, but they just have a lot of stuff that I just want. I may not necessarily use all of the things, but I just want it. I don't, I want a truck. I want a nice truck with some 20 inch wheels and the, and the right color and the right trim, right? You know, you want the, the, the prestige or the, the, I guess in the Chevy, it'd be high country and a GMC, it'd be Denali, right? If you want the the Ford, you want the limited platinum. The the Tundra, I think, has a limited or a platinum variant. I can't remember what that is, right? You want you just want what you perceive is the best of the best. For some people, it's none of those extra things. It's just you know the the utilitarian features. But the thing the thing that I think of a lot of us share is you know whatever it is, you're going to have to spend a sizable amount of money on it. We're, we're talking about vehicles, we're talking about knives or anything, right? When it comes down to the functional aspects, initially what you may not perceive as a flaw, if down the road becomes an issue that you do perceive as a flaw, since we're talking about pickups, you know, sometimes, you know, the tow capacity of a half ton can be huge, right? Some of the newer trucks can tow 12 and a half thousand pounds as a half ton, as a half ton gasser. That's pretty good, right? Um, if, if that's all you need to tow. But if the motor shifts funny, depending on altitude and, you know, whether you're going up or downhill, because the transmission in that generation or that, that vehicle um, doesn't do as well with a certain type of load at a certain angle or wherever you are. You know, you got you guys who drive across the country and you're towing a lot with whatever size pickup, you know that different transitions, uh, different transmissions, different engines, different, um, you know, loads and, and uh, you know, the different, uh, you know, how much the vehicle weighs and what, what it's meant to do uh, can all have, you know, can all vary. There are certain generations and certain um, certain models and, and setups that are just better all the way around, even if they are, you know, uh, uh, boasting an enormous tow capacity, right? That's not the only thing, but that's the kind of thing that draws us in. So we tell ourselves, well, I still got the right thing, still got the right truck because it can tow this much, but is, does it do it the way that I want to, or am I realizing these little things? Oh, that's not quite, it's not quite doing it as well as this one. You know, my old truck did this a little bit better, but we ignore a lot of those things because we spent so much effing money on it. Right. And, uh, so we just don't, we, we don't, we certainly don't admit it to other people 
um, but we even more so, you know, we don't admit it internally to ourselves. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm relating all this back to hinderer, right? Um, I just, you know, whenever I get a hinderer, I look at all those little things that I'm now well aware of are, you know, they're, they're little issues that definitely do bother people and they're bothering me more, you know, day by day, but it's just like, I just really want this and I love it for so many other reasons, so many reasons that I tell myself are necessities or an integral part of loving this thing as a whole that I'm going to overlook that stuff, you know, and I paid a whole bunch of money for it. <laughs> so I don't like thinking that I paid too much. I like thinking that I know what I'm doing when it comes to buying these things. And the, the truth is, is that a, a lot of us have a pretty good idea, but none of us know 100%, right? You know, you're not 100% certain. If, you're, if you have a $10 knife that you've been using for 10 years, congratulations, you won. You know exactly what you're talking about in the world of folding knives and longevity and all that. And if you're perfectly happy with it and you, you know, recognize the flaws and don't care because it's a hyper inexpensive item that you have no emotional attachment to, right? And you didn't make the there was no build up. There was no anticipation in the purchase. It was, you know, an objective, this, this purely objective, you know, tool or your, your feelings towards it were purely objective. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> I just find it funny that I, it's so easy to be objective with things that aren't yours, right? Um, you can appreciate them, you know, um, but it's because you didn't spend the money on it, you know, and at the same time on the flip end of it, I also, I always try to be you know, um, supportive um, for people that uh, make purchases on knives that um, I would never own and that, that there, are, there are things that I, or maybe not even necessarily issues, but just little things that I'm like, that's annoying, I don't like that. Maybe that person, you know, either hasn't picked up on that yet or they, they have and they don't care and they love it, right? There's a lot, I see this a lot in my comment section, you know, people are like, anybody who would spend, this is actually my combat true it on. I don't, I don't have, um, you know, I always joke about having a, a glass ego and, and being, um, you know, hypersensitive in my live streams. But the truth is, is that if you're going to do YouTube and you're going to get hundreds of comments a day and a few of them are going to be super mean, you have to have a thick skin. So I'm not saying that um, I have an invincible, uh, you know, like in terms of the, the, the skin surrounding my, um, my emotions and my, uh, my ego and all that. Um, I'm not saying that I'm invincible, but it, it's really easy to just wave stuff off. I love my combat truodon. I love it. I could have a thousand people a day telling me that I'm the biggest idiot in the world for owning this thing. The truth is, is that this was a gift from my wife, but because we're married, you know, the, the, mon the money's our money, right? So I still, in a way, spent my own money on it. I just wasn't anticipating it. I love that thing. I know exactly how much it costs, and even if it wasn't a gift... I still would have end up, ended up buying it at some point. And guess what? I know that that thing's overpriced. I know it is. <laughs> I don't care. I love it, right? And so when people, you know, come down on me, I'm, that's fine. You know, I'm total. it's totally fine. But I, I see people do it to each other or somebody in the comment section will be like, I just picked up the blah, 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 blah. I love it. It's so cool. And somebody for no reason will jump in and be like, you're an idiot for spending that much money on that like like that person has never once in their life overspent on anything or purchased anything that is you know less beneficial than what it's worth right i mean anybody who claims that that's the case like they have this all-encompassing knowledge on all the utilitarian benefits of any object any tool and exactly how it relates to the cost right and so therefore they're able to make purchases that are nothing short of infinite wisdom they're full of crap, right? If that was the case, they'd be wearing grass shoes, grass pants, and living in a grass mud hut, you know, out in the middle of a field, eating sticks and berries, right? They live, then, then, yeah, then there you go, then you won. But rather, nobody, nobody lives like that, right? Listen to me trying to justify my... <laughs> Ultimately, what this is culminating to is me justifying my recent purchase, right? This is me, this is self, you know, internal reaffirmation that I made my purchase. I think it's completely okay uh, if you love something, um, despite its flaws, to keep loving it. But I'm very much aware, at least this this is my thought, is that the, the more expensive that item is that you have decided that you love, despite of its despite of its uh, despite its flaws. Sorry, English. Um, the uh, the more it is, the more that love is being bolstered and basically propped up by not wanting to admit that you may have overspent on it. 
Um, if you saw my uh, unboxing, which I'm... See, the, I'm recording this on a Wednesday afternoon, but you guys are watching it on Sunday, which means the, the hinder that I'm referring to is not physically here yet for me in this time, but you guys likely have already seen the unboxing if the schedule is going the way that I plan it to, right? Um, and I, this item I have purchased before, it is definitely, I'm already aware that it is overpriced, um, and, but I just want it, so, you know? And uh, I, I imagine, you know, relating it back to what I'm talking about is that the, it's it's propped up by how much money I spent on it, right? My feelings towards it and how much positivity I can throw at it. We're at 20 minutes. I think you guys get the point. Um, if this made sense or you guys have similar feelings or thoughts or have experienced the same thing, or you just have a comment for whatever reason, feel free to leave it down below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.